always thought that Jesus is true and who he is, but it took me a long time for it to get through my head because I had never really listened or cared enough for it. I didn't attend the church services regularly because it felt boring and meaningless, and it all never seemed serious to me back then. I went all the way to confirmation because I thought it was just the right thing to do, and didn't realize that being a poor part included being passionate about my Savior. But then in high school I started thinking about the existence of a higher power, and what its nature would be like if there was one. I have a chronic health condition that started my junior year, and it was the cause of a lot of pain and initially convinced me that either God couldn't exist, but that I didn't like him because of what he was putting me through. However, looking back, that was extremely shallow thinking, because Christ is the only reason I was able to persevere that struggle and come out the other side and convinced he was true. During that period, it took me some time to eventually reach the conclusion that this world is evidence for a God, because there's too much purpose in this world for it to be here without him. Yet I still had to figure out who the true God was. Deep down, I knew it was Christ, but I just hadn't accepted him yet. However, for a couple of years, I still wasn't convinced that I had to do anything about this, and my attitude was, I guess we'll just find out for sure when we die. Uh, we don't have to wait for death to come, and we sure, certainly shouldn't. Soon before studying UC Davis, I studied Christian Fellowship to learn more about Christ, since I was convinced he was most likely the true God. We held Bible studies and events each Friday, where we all got together and praised God, and I'm thankful for these moments and those people. Through this fellowship, I ended up moving into an inner fellowship house in Davis, because my thought process was, I know that Jesus is the truth, yet I don't know enough about him. And surrounding myself with some of his followers that are my age will be a good way to learn. And Christ used my brothers in this house to lead me to him. Christ's sacrifice has saved me through no work of my own. Now I have a personal relationship with him. Getting to know him has brought much comfort to my life, knowing that God is not and loves us, and that no matter what, is, what happens, our Father is control. Uh, thank you. Amen. It's a baptism. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Jesus, Heavenly Father, I pray, Lord, that you cover him in your blood, in Jesus' name. All the people who are Catholic, Thank you, Lord Jesus. doing believers' baptism on Reformation Day. Amen! <laughs> but uh, it's been encouraging to see you grow. Uh, we've been edified and built up by your testimony. And because of your faith in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, it is my joy and privilege to baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. As if it was the first time hearing it. After that, my eyes that 
ones who were applying for the king of this world were in light of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I felt the weight of my sin over my shoulders and my need for repentance towards the holy God. Not towards the God of my own creation, but towards the God of the Bible. So I repent and humble myself and ask for forgiveness and, I, and place my trust in God through Christ and by the power of the Holy Spirit. And I got saved by grace alone, through faith alone, and Christ alone. Romans 10, 9, 10 says, Because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For, the, for with the heart one believes and is justified. And with the mouth one confesses and is saved. Suddenly I became a new creation, credited with Christ's righteousness and pure justification. Now I no longer live for myself, but live for Christ, waiting earnestly for his coming. Romans 8 38 39 says, uh, for, for I am sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor death, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. I hope my testimony can be edifying to the souls of many. I glory be to God our King. See your hunger for the word continue to grow uh, has been has been a privilege and been very neat. And based on your profession of faith and your love for the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Him. 
and I have been freed from sin and found my home here in City Bible Church. Mark, based on your profession of faith, and your love for the Lord Jesus Christ, your Savior, it is my privilege to baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Father, we thank you for the salvific work that you have accomplished in Allison, Isaac's, Oil's, and Mark's life. It is only the transformation that you can supernaturally produce that makes them dead, from being dead to being alive. Uh, and what you have begun, we believe that you will finish. Use us as a church, as faithful uh, saints and stewards to care for these individuals. We ask all these things in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. As we stand as we sing our final song.